What does an INFJ need in a partner, in a relationship? A lot of times in the comments people are asking me, Frank, what type, what personality type should an INFJ date? And I've talked about it in other videos, but the question isn't really a good question because it's not as though people go around with their personality type hovering above their head and it's just not feasible to try to type everyone before you date them. I mean, what world are you living in? What I'm going to do instead is suggest some qualities and traits that you should be looking for in partners that I think are very compatible and will work very well with someone who is an INFJ. Because there's a lot of personality quirks that INFJs generally have that uh, someone needs to be able to handle, you know? So that's what we're looking for in a prospective partner. First of all, an INFJ needs someone who is a little bit spontaneous because INFJs tend to be on the less spontaneous side of things because we're planners. IJs in general are big on the planning and not so big on being spontaneous. So it's good to have someone who can draw you out of your shell a little bit. They don't have to be crazy spontaneous. It doesn't have to be like, hey, I got an idea. Let's, uh, I, I can't even think of something spontaneous because it's so outside of my day-to-day -day life. What is it even like to be spontaneous? I don't know, but Maybe I should be looking for someone who is a little bit spontaneous. Someone who can be like, hey buddy, we don't have to plan everything. Secondly, an INFJ needs someone who is solid on their own identity. Someone who knows who they are, they've got that figured out, that's not really an issue anymore. Because for INFJs, we oftentimes struggle with that and figuring out who we are exactly, which kind of leads us to always look out at other people to fig to to like triangulate a bit to figure out what should we be doing right now and i'm not saying it's impossible but if you were to pair up with someone else who is having this issue of like what am i supposed who am i what's my identity it's this weird dynamic of like in its most simplified form what do you want to do i don't know what do you want to do but it can it can also just turn into this thing of neither neither one of you can really take a strong stand because you're always looking toward the other person in a way to figure out what am I supposed to do here. So getting someone who's strong on who they are and is very good at making decisions, they know what they want, that's a really good thing to have. Before we continue, let's stop really quick and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Another good one, which might hurt a little bit, and you might actually look for people who don't have this, but I think it's good for INFJs to look for people who can call them out. The kind of people who are direct. I like direct people who are just going to be like, dude, you're totally in your head right now. Dude, you're overthinking this. Dude, what are you talking about? Someone who isn't afraid to just be like, what are, what are we doing here? Can we cut out the BS? Not that we are big BSers. But, well, we can be, whether, whether we like to admit it or not. Sometimes we're also just kind of like so in our own heads, so abstract. We need someone who can give us a little bit of like, hey, let's come back down to earth. This is where we live. Welcome. Can you please make yourself a little bit more practical, a little bit more understandable, a little bit more concrete? So, and someone who isn't afraid to slap us around a little bit in that regard. Not literally, but in that abstract way. <laughs> slap us around and be like, hey, bring it back to earth, baby. Related to that, an INFJ needs someone who can make sense of our weird way of speaking because INFJs and all NF types really have a weird way of talking, that NF way where nothing really quite makes sense at the end of the day. I mean, you guys have watched my videos, right? You know that half of what I say is like, what? You need someone who can deal with it. Because there are some people who can't deal with it. They'll hear your NF talk, this, this abstract, feelings-focused talk, 
and they'll just be like, that's some BS. I don't F with this way of talking. You don't make any sense to me. Get out of here. But then there are other people who they might be NFs also who are just like, I'm, I'm with you, baby. But then there are also other people who may, they might not be NF types, but they can appreciate it. They might be fascinated by it because it's so far from the way that they speak, the way that they think, that they're just like, you got something that I want, man. So you need to find someone who won't get sick of it, who can tolerate it, who maybe even understands what you're trying to say. Next, you need someone who is empathetic and isn't gonna try to test your boundaries because, the, I mean, this is a thing where if you are really a really healthy individual, and are good at asserting your boundaries, it's not as much of an issue. But the thing is, I, I think INFJs often struggle with boundary drawing. And so if you get involved with someone who's gonna test you on your boundaries, it's not the greatest dynamic. It's, even, if you can, even if you can hold the boundaries, if it's gonna be a repeated thing where they're like, can I cross this? Can I take advantage of you? Um, the, it's not sustainable. So you need to find someone who is able to say, okay, you've drawn a boundary, I respect it. You know, which just seems like maybe it's a normal, courteous thing to respect people's boundaries. But I think there are some people out there and it's just their way of, it's just their way of being to constantly test boundaries and there's no malintent behind it. But they need someone who's willing to punch back, you know, and be like, boom, no, these are my boundaries. Back off, step off. And INFJs aren't typically the ones who are gonna like punch hard and say, step off. You know, they'll eventually relent and be like, okay, I don't have a boundary, whatever. It was stupid to have a boundary. So look for, <laughs> look for the people who aren't gonna test it constantly. There is more to it. There is a flip side to this. What should we be looking for that people need in us? Because it's a two-way street. What do they need? We should be looking for people who have specific things that they need, although it's not always, this isn't something that maybe you see on the first date or two. But there's, there are things that we can offer. You know, in dating, you should not just be thinking about what do I need, what can I get out of it, but you should also be thinking what can I offer? We as INFJs have very specific strengths and gifts that we can offer to people. So we should be looking for the people who want it, who are looking for that. Here's a few of those things. We need to look for someone who needs a good listener, but who has like a subtle touch. The kind of person who in a conversation is listening to you, but doesn't need to prod a whole lot and can kind of subtly get you to talk about what you want to talk about without battering you with a bunch of questions. And I think INFJs are good at that. We just naturally, we just naturally want to understand what is going to make the other, what makes the other person tick, what's going to make them most comfortable, how can I unravel this person? And uh, so it's good to find someone who wants that, who wants to be handled in that way, someone who, who can be gently Un unraveled. That sounds a little sinister, but it's not. I didn't mean it in a bad way. Your prospective partner should also need someone who can open them up and show them new and unexpected perspectives on life. Because INFJs are really good. They're <laughs> that's the weird way to put it. They're good at that. INFJs just have a weird way of looking at the world a unique way of looking at the world because introverted intuition, our dominant function, is just a, it's a very unique way of perceiving because it's abstract and it's subjective. So it's like you just see the world in a very unique way. So your prospective partner should be the kind of person who will, who is kind of looking for that and who will appreciate it. And that might be another person who's intuitive, who really likes you know, your unique way of looking at things, or maybe someone who isn't intuitive, and it's just this whole new world to be like, oh wow, you, you see the world in that way? You see this, these deeper meanings in these things? There are people who don't want that, who don't appreciate that at all. So look for the people who are looking for that. There's, there are people who just have a hunger for that. And then your prospective partner out there should be the kind of person 
they're, who is looking for someone who can give them advice. They, someone who wants a partner who they can rely on to kind of just like give advice when needed. INFJs are really good at giving advice. We love it. It's just a natural thing that we do. We can't help it. So if you, you don't want to be with a partner who is just like, they don't, they don't want to hear it. They don't want advice. It's, good. it's better to be with the kind of person who is like receptive, who is like, I sort of need, I sort of am interested in having some guidance. It's an interesting thing to have someone who's solid on their identity, but is also sort of open to advice. That shows that it's a very healthy, well-balanced person who isn't just all in on, no, I know what to do, I don't need to hear what you say, but isn't all just like, oh crap, I need you to tell me what to do. It's like a healthy balance of, they know that they don't have all the answers, but they also are solid enough on themselves to be like, I feel confident in who I am. There you go, those are the traits you should be looking for in a prospective partner and the traits that they might be looking for that you can offer them. Thanks for watching. Check out some other of my videos over here. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. And until next time, stay cool and attractive.